the reasons we don't feel joy as much as we might like is because we ha have a culture in which joy is judged often as frivolous, as childish, as superficial. And it's interesting to think about where this actually comes from. It has pretty deep roots in our culture. So if you look in 1810, Goethe wrote in his Theory of Color that savage nations, uneducated people, and children typically prefer bright colors, whereas people of refinement avoid color in their dress and try to banish color from the objects about them. And what happens in this equation is that we're seeing the equivalency between savage nations, so uncivil, uncivilized people, primitiveness, um, a lack of sophistication or education and, ch and children. And those are being equated to the sort of aesthetics, the tangible manifestations of joy in our culture. And, you know, when you look at the roots of this, a lot of it stems from colonialism. So you had a bunch of uh, Europeans getting on boats, going around the world, trying to conquer other peoples. And when they found these sort of uninhibited displays of emotion, when they found festivals and dancing and drumming and colorful um, dwellings and outfits, um, they felt a need to distance themselves from those behaviors. And so what happened was European culture became more and more emotionally repressed as a result. Uh, so we had to get rid of the color in our surroundings because that was uncivilized. Um, we had to, you know, get rid of our sort of exuberant and playful displays. And you actually see this when in certain colonies, when settlers would arrive, they would bring their pretty raucous festivals. I mean, carnival originated in Europe and it was a pretty raucous festival there. Um, they would bring it to these these uh, colonies, like in Trinidad and Tobago, for example. And then once they got there, they realized they had to stop visibly celebrating and they started having formal balls instead of, you know, wild celebrations because that made them seem too close to the natives, right? And so joy became, you know, repressed within our culture and uh, in its place we got this sense of, you know, seriousness that this is what is valued and, and that became reflected in our aesthetic culture as well. Over the past few years, the dominant aesthetic has been a, an aesthetic of minimalism. And we've been encouraged to sort of simplify and, you know, strip back our, our possessions in our homes and sort of get to um, very simple gray beige interiors. And in a way, this has been described as a, a sort of reaction to all, all of the overstimulation that's going on in our devices, that it sort of helps us relax. But in fact, what we find is that um, minimalist interiors actually can be very stressful. Um, that when you look at our sort of natural love of abundance and lushness and, and textures and sensation, when you actually deprive us of sensations, um, we go a little bit crazy. And um, a study I love that sort of ex explores this um, had a bunch of people sitting in a room um, and all they had to entertain themselves was a, a machine that gave electric shocks. And after only a few minutes of sitting alone in a bare unadorned room, they started giving themselves quite painful electric shocks rather than sit without any stimulation. So the brain seeks and craves stimulation and when it doesn't have that, it will sort of seek it out even in ways that maybe aren't so adaptive. A real world example where you can see this craving for abundance sort of overwhelming um, the, the modernist desire for minimalism happened in the planned city of Brasilia. So the city was planned out, um, it was uh, you know, designed as a, a truly modern city uh, with sort of uniform blocks of buildings that um, all looked alike and were very simple and, and modern and uh, orderly in their design and what happened as people began to move into these buildings was that they started to miss their old cramped um, abundant way of living and they started to um, build new suburbs on the out on the outskirts of Brasilia and they started to bring back their markets and their kiosks and all of the things that made life feel more rich and abundant back into the city. Early on in my study of joy I learned about a an artist named Arakawa and a poet named Madeleine Ginz who believed that the dull gray boxes that we often live in in the modern world were actually killing us. 
And so they set out to create um, a, a set of apartments that they believed would reverse aging. And they called this uh, the reversible destiny lofts. And the basic theory is that, uh, you know, our bodies are sort of lulled, our senses are lulled into a kind of a stupor by living in these um, buildings that have sort of flat floors and uh, neutral surfaces, and that we need to sort of shake up our senses more often. And so they created this, uh, these apartments. They have sloping floors. They feel like um, they have these like goosebumps over their surface that almost look like um, dimples on the skin of a giant. That's sort of the way that I describe them. And when you um, when you walk through this apartment, um, you find that you know you have to kind of hold on to the edges to make sure you don't fall over. Um, so it's constantly testing your balance. Fortunately, instead of having regular furniture, there are just poles everywhere to help you sort of navigate your way around the place. And all of the rooms are a little bit different than traditional rooms. So instead of having um, you know just normal uh, rectangular shaped rooms. Uh, they have a sphere uh, is one of the rooms. There's a cylinder. The bathroom is a cylinder and it's sort of lying on its side so you have to scramble over this floor to get to the bathroom and everything is painted in dozens of different colors. So this is a little much for everyday life but it's a really interesting experience in having your senses tested. And what I found as I came back in, out into the world, I, I was a little bit worried that I would find that everything else looked kind of dull by comparison. But in fact, it sort of fires up your senses and wakes them all back up again. You come back out into the world almost more attuned to your surroundings than when you left. Mm -hmm.